hello and welcome to the fourth soundcheck tutorial video. Um, right now I will talk about um, further aspects regarding the connectivity uh, process and uh, something called UDP port forwarding. As said in the last video, um, you can connect to your own local host. This is the first line, the first permanent peer. We have uh, one, two, three permanent entries as mentioned previously. And now I have two more users logged in right now. I don't want to disturb them and they should not disturb me. This is why I enabled the decline any call option here. So in case anybody uh, tries to connect with me, I will not see any pop-up window or whatever. The call will automatically be de declined. However, I can connect to my own peer on the router. This is what I want to show you today as one more process um, in order to figure out um, how your network um, access point is working, if everything's fine. So connecting to localhost and connecting to your own NAT router um, is an interesting and good feature in order to configure your sound jack setup. Uh, okay, I have um, enabled the sample buffer of 128, network buffer of 256, one channel, and the default input and output device of my Mac. As last time, I can connect this way and try to do it. It tells me this is my own entry uh, on my NAT router. I can cancel or connect and of course want to connect. And then it does something like this. It's trying obviously. However, after 10 times it gives up. So this is a good example to see how a connection fails to connect. What Soundjack does in background, it changes the port. So it knows the IP address, but the UDP port for some reason um, is not working. So the NAT router is not willing to let my stream get through. And uh, this is something that can happen with any other connection. And in fact, with many other users, you can experience uh, this issue so that you see it's counting from again from 10, 9, 8 to 0 and eventually gives up. This is related to your NAT router or in some cases called firewall or whatever because it has some security features that consciously block incoming UDP traffic. And some routers behave like this, others behave like that. And we included um, some features that um, determine what kind of NAT router that is. And um, this information you can see in brackets after UDP port. In that case, you see UDP port 50,000 and in brackets you see 184. And whenever you see eight in the middle, Here it is a one in the middle, that's good. The other you can see also one in the middle. But in that case, my own peer has an eight in the middle. Um, that always indicates that uh, there could be an issue. It doesn't necessarily mean that there will be an issue, but it could lead to an issue. So 184 is the second worst. The worst is 384 or 388. Um, and um, and the best is what you can see here, 114. And um, the default behavior could be very different, but you can adjust your network router, your, your, your NAT, in a certain way that it will lead to a situation like this, where you have 114. And this is what I want to show you right now. First, you need to figure out what the interface IP of your network devices 
and I opened that in the background for you. In my case, it is 192.168.0.29. Um, but that's not the point. What I want to see is this, the router address here. And I put it into my window here. I log on. And now I'm logged on to my network router. And there <coughs> you need to go to extended here. It's it's different from router to router, um, but what you need in any case is what is called here port vitalitung, or in English port forwarding. Definitely not port trigger, it should be port forwarding. And here I prepared that kind of UDP forwarding rule already. You have to make sure that this IP completely matches your endpoint IP. So 0 0.29, 0 0.29, so that's correct. You need to have the right ports put in, like 50,000 start and end port. It's only one port Soundjack uses, 50,000. UDP, not TCP, make sure about this. Activate it and enable it. Voila. Now, theoretically, we have the port forwarding enabled. And if that's the case practically, we need to re enter the stage. And again, take a look. And we see here behind UDP port 2, 50,000 in brackets. 114. So this is exactly what we wanted. And if I'm correct, I hope so, the next try will lead to uh, a connection that will actually work. Okay, it tells me again this is my NAT router. And here we go. So now it's working. Now I'm connected to my own uh, NAT. And you can hear the feedback, sorry. And the same way as I played with localhost last time, I can now change the parameters. For example, the amount of buffers. Here we go, changing it to the lowest value to one. And now you will see some flickering, especially when I go lower here. Oh yeah. So that's interesting. Now I am connected to my own NAT router and you might be surprised why uh, do I get this unstable connection like always f uh, flashing uh, red, green and so this is very unstable so there's obviously a lot of jitter and in fact this is not related to soundtrack at all it is related to my actual connection because right now I'm connected uh, to my router I'm connected to the internet via a wireless connection and this is definitely not recommended because wireless connection they introduce too much jitter so the packet send variations, the time variations in sending out packages uh, is much, much higher than it is the case with a uh, uh, with wired uh, network connection. It could work out several seconds, but then it can again have an increased jitter and you will definitely experience a lot of issues with wireless connections, so this is not recommended at all. You can use it for uh, conventional voice over IP where latency is not such an issue because there you simply have to increase the buffer. See here, like if I adjust my buffer to 18, of course I have now more than 100 uh, milliseconds latency, but I have a very stable connection. Um, but don't use that in case you need very, very low latency. Okay, um, as a proof of concept, I will now move back to my router. Disable the port forwarding. Re-enter the stage. Oh 
Oh, sorry. For some reason it did not detect my... Oh dear, I, I have to to reboot this the thought jack demon just happened. Here we go. Now let's take a look at this I symbol again. And you see again one eight four. It was one one four when the port forwarding was enabled. Now it is one eight four so the port for port forwarding is not working anymore. And I believe I'm actually quite sure that the next connect test will not work. Let's see. Connect test. And now it's trying. Ten, nine, eight. So you see that um by enabling the UDP port forwarding, um you will have a very, very solid and good way to um to get uh, connectivity with any kind of peer behind any kind of network router, but you have to make sure that it is actually working. And if you have issues with your port forwarding and if you see that something is not working, please send me screen videos also regarding your router configuration, anything, and make sure that you have something like, like 114 and nothing like 184 or 384 because that is the worst case. Actually, the most worst case is 388 which is the case with many um, smartphone connections. So, okay, um, that was the fourth Soundjack video, Soundjack tutorial video. The next one uh, I will connect with some other users, but for now I have covered most of the basic uh, Soundjack setup details. And uh, please proceed like this, because otherwise we need to uh, get through the whole process again and again and uh, if you do it like this you will have covered any uh, significant details uh, regarding the soundtrack configuration please let me know how it goes and have fun bye bye